Low riding isn't just a sport, it's not just a hobby. This is in my blood, this is in my family line. It goes back generations. It goes back to when my great grandparents had first came from Mexico. And ultimately going back into it, I wanted to keep the tradition going. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to have a lowrider. We used to go out to a park called Rotary Park. We used to see all these different car clubs and it was just a beautiful thing to see people coming together. Then the cars, they were just so beautiful. They had these graphics done, they had these murals done. They had so much work and dedication put into them. And I can remember my dad always telling me, hey, don't ever touch the cars, don't ever touch the cars. And for me, I was like, oh man, it's like gold. You know, you just can't, you just can't go and you can't touch it. I just built that passion to where I said, hey, you know what, I wanna go out there, I wanna get me my own one of these days. My car is a 1971 Oldsmobile Delta 88 with an all-black cherry paint job. I got some golden red pinstripings just freshly done over on the skirts. I got trims that are actually chromed out and engraved by myself. This car didn't really come too much with a lot of chrome as uh, most other make and models of different vehicles. It's pretty rare to find parts for this vehicle when it came down to the chrome, so coming up with uh, parts from different vehicles, that was the puzzle right there that I had to put together myself. The engine is a 355.7 original Oldsmobile engine. The wheels that I have are 13 by 7 cross lace from Superior Wire Wheels. The interior is a burgundy suede material. I wanted to accent the original interior that was done all leather tuck and roll, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I added my own flavor, did a burgundy suede material. The hydraulics that I have on the vehicle are a two pump, four battery setup from Hoppo's Hydraulics. I didn't want to do a three wheel motion, just something to lay and play with it. But most of all, I wanted to have an original lowrider style, like 70s era. Every time I drive back home to visit family, I take these random little drives to see if I could find a car specifically in the 70s. And one day I just decided to take a shortcut back home and when I got back to this uh, main street, there it was just sitting there. When I found it, it was buried in dirt. It was smashed in from the front, smashed from the side. It needed a lot of work done. And it had a very faded for sale sign. Came to find out the owner was about to junk it. I said, hey, let me take it off your hands. He said, hey, give me $400 for it, it's yours. Started it right up, pulled it out the dirt. We had to drag it out the dirt, drove it home right away. It actually started and it actually drove home. <laughs> Uh, the restoration process from the time I got it all the way to the time we painted it took about three years. This was actually my first car. This was my first lowrider. The well, first vehicle I've ever owned. The first lowrider I've ever owned. So I built a relationship with this vehicle. And this thing will never part from me. <laughs> Lowriding wasn't just something that started from myself or my father. It goes back generations. It goes back to my grandfather, he builds himself a 1961, and then my father sees it. My father picks up off of it and says, man, look at this car, this car is beautiful. I want to have my own car one day. I remember back when I was a kid, seeing my dad with the 1968 Chevy pickup. But seeing what he did with it, and me being able to be there with them, working on it day and night, it helped me build an appreciation for these cars. And at that point, I used to tell my dad, hey, you know what, I want to get a car for myself one day. I wanted something that, that I could build myself and I could teach my son the same way. I was born and raised in Fresno, California. I was born to very young parents. My dad was 14 years old, my mom was 15, she had just turned 15. It was a little tough, you know, being raised by children, but you know, they did a good job. Ultimately, between my mom and my dad, there was six of us total, me being the oldest. Eventually, my father moved on, my mother moved on, going their separate ways. My mom, she works as a paralegal. She's been working as a paralegal since 1997. My dad is an air condition, heating technician. Worked very hard his whole life. Growing up in Fresno, it was a very, very tough area. I was new, because I grew up around surrounding cities. And a lot of people either 
pick on you as a new kid or they take you into whatever little social network that they have going on. It was an area that was infested with gang members. And I was a very, very tiny little guy. So, you know, I tried my best to stay away from any kind of negativity. When I was a little boy, I used to always say that I wanted to be in the military. My mom used to go buy me G.I. Joes, buy me these little packs of army men. And I used to just pretend that that was me. I always used to say as a kid, hey, I want to grow up to drive tanks. I actually was always outside digging holes in the dirt, building little forts. And I always used to tell my dad, hey, dad, I'm in the military now. I'm in the military now. My dad would always say, no, no, you're not going to the military. You're not going to the military. The military is just scary. 9-11 had happened. Next thing we know, the country's at war. And I used to say to myself, I need to go out there, I need to do my part. And by the time I was 17, 18 years old, I go and I enlist. Right after graduation, I went straight to boot camp. I'll tell you, it was the toughest time of my life. Three months being away from home. I was never so homesick. But ultimately, I learned that it was about a brotherhood. Right after boot camp, I went over to Camp Pendleton, California. Uh, I went to school to be an amphibious assault vehicle crewman. They're basically tanks that float in the ocean. Our primary job is to transport Marines from the ships to the shores. I ultimately became a crew chief, which is allowing me to be in charge of not just the vehicle, but also the crew that's inside the vehicle. Uh, as time went by, I picked up the rank of sergeant, ultimately staff sergeant, to where I became a section leader. Now I'm in charge of multiple vehicles. An opportunity came up to go to Afghanistan. It was a selected few that went to be personal security detachment for a governor in the Marja district. It was a dangerous time to be out there. There was combat that was uh, going on out there, but it was due to the fact that it was a change for a lot of the people. We're helping out people that couldn't help out themselves. There was a lot of people that didn't have what we had. We saw so many little kids out there that were struggling, that were playing with rocks, brushing their teeth with little sticks. It made us appreciate what we had back home. About a year after I came back from Afghanistan, uh, we went on a deployment to Okinawa, Japan. So once my tour in Okinawa, Japan was complete, I wanted to go back to a community. I wanted to give back. I wanted to go look for those that were in my shoes years back and be able to help them out of whatever situations that they might have been in. I went out to La Puente, California to be a recruiter. I was out there for three years. I got referred by a good friend of mine that said, hey, you know what? I see that you're so into lowriders. Why don't you go out to La Puente? And I said, okay, I'll try it out. I took my car out there and it was a blessing because I was able at that point now to start showing the communities that, hey, I'm a person just like you. This is what I do on the side. It was a fun experience to get to actually let them look and see a little bit into my life, what I was doing with myself in my free time. The sense that you're actually going out to various types of communities to go and pass the knowledge that I've learned in the military to give young men and women an opportunity, give them additional paths to life. The most proudest time I've ever had in the Marine Corps was being a Marine Corps recruiter. So now that my time in the Marine Corps has come to an end, my next goal now is to join the LAPD. I signed up about a year ago. It's only a few more weeks and here I'm gonna go to the academy. <laughs> Within the past year, I've been training with weapons. I also work with uh, canines. Now I am EMT certified. I utilize what I've learned as a recruiter, being able to touch with communities, learn how to respect others, learn how to be able to talk with others and listen and be able to uh, understand what the individual's needs may be. During this time, I want to be able to make sure that I keep my car back home. And I want people to know that, hey, this vehicle is from Fresno. It's from out there, so it's definitely a proud moment whenever I can take the vehicle back to Fresno. Ultimately, we all have goals. We all have dreams, but at the same time, we all have naysayers. There's always gonna be onesies or twosies of negative people that'll tell you that you can't do it. Whatever goal or dream that you may have, you chase it, you keep going. And if you fall down, you just keep moving forward because eventually it's gonna come to you. You just gotta be patient, but at the same time, you just gotta keep moving. 
You do what's right in your heart, by the time you know it, you're going to get it. My name is Mario Brajas. I am a U.S. Marine Corps Staff Sergeant, and I am a lowrider role model.